Here we go. Does not feel very big, but I would bet that it's the right species at least. Just a little baby. Oop. Chunky little guy though. Little Nico hook. Oh, he's fat. Healthy little guy. Nico rigging the Magnum Shaky Snake. It's a pretty big profiled worm. It's got a really crazy action underwater. This is a little bit stiffer, and you can see how that just kind of flops over and flops around. Pretty wild action on it. Oh, there's one. There we go. Another one off that transition. This does not feel very big. Another, not a huge one, but he liked the power bait. <laughs> I mean, that's a pretty big worm. Chunky fingers in there. I mean, <laughs> that's a pretty big old worm, but he liked that action. Oh, another little jump, and he can see here, we're just sitting right on this transition line. So we got a bunch of rock. I just hit spot lock, so we're facing into the wind, but we're right on the line, and the last couple bites have come right on this transition. So not all the way up into the rock, but you can see it's a little bit more soft bottom and they're just hanging right on that transition. So it's just a pretty standard deal, you know, mid to late summer, coming out targeting deeper water transition zones, whether that's hard bottom to soft bottom, hard bottom into the weed line, soft bottom into the weed line, whatever it might be, bass just really key in on transition zones. And you can do a lot of different stuff in those zones, like today coming out, you know, throwing a heavy chatter bait, a crank bait, those types of things or if you have to dial it back and get a little bit more finesse with them like we had to today you know throwing a drop drop shot like Luke's throwing right now or like this an eco rig you know this is a little bit bigger profiled worm than a standard Nico rig but I like it just because of the action and it doesn't seem to matter as you've seen you know we've caught a couple pretty small ones and they'll eat it either way so just you know using something you're confident in you know that you can nico rig pretty much any kind of bait you want really keying in on those transition zones this time of year mid to late summer warm water there's no mapping on this particular lake but we fished out here before and we have some auto chart live data that shows that we're we're pretty much on a main lake point you can see here there's a little reed point that comes out and it's a long extension out deep and there's multiple transition zones across this whole piece of structure where like right now we're sitting on more of a soft bottom to hard bottom transition but you get a little shallower into that 12 foot range and you have a real nice weed line into that hard bottom which is another awesome area to target but it doesn't seem like the fish are using it today obviously not everybody has the luxury of high, super high-end electronics and everything, but if you have a decent map, you can generally do it using your 2D sonar, and you, you just drive the structure, and you're looking for those transition zones through 2D, but today, what I have, and I have the luxury of having it, is 360 imaging, and just boat positioning on offshore structure, and knowing exactly where my boat is in relation to this transition zone. So I. I've kind of been moving around the structure and repositioning the boat as need be to be able to make that lineup, make that exact cast right on that transition zone. And use, utilizing spot lock, I got the nose pointed into the wind, I'm on the upwind side of the, the piece of structure. Just kind of moving the boat around and placing it right on that transition line where I can make that cast straight down it and I know my bait is in that strike zone in that high percentage area all the time throughout my entire cast. Just in general with you know any kind of finesse tactic whether it's a net rig a drop shot an eco rig like i have here you know it's really important to match your the right rod reel line combination to what you're doing i kind of like that you know low seven foot range for most things you know a seven foot to a seven three it's kind of my my preferred range for an eco rig and drop shot and any of that this happens to be a seven foot one medium. It's an extra fast, so it's got a pretty good tip and I can feel it, feel everything that's going on down there pretty well. Everything's transmitting through that nail weight paired with an eight pound braid. I like that high vis braid. So on the fall or at any point, if I see that line jump, I can reel down and give a good reel set. It's just being in contact with that bait a little bit more visually and through through transmission through your rod. 
you know, pairing that with a good fluorocarbon leader. It's just a, my preferred combo for most finesse applications. There we go. There's another one. Spot lock right there. Oh, not a bad one. He's a fighter. He's angry. <laughs> He's not overly happy getting a hook in his face. Yeah, another chunky one. Yeah. It's fun. Super healthy fish. Not overly long, but he's got a gut on him. Oh, he's blind too. Right in the snoot. Awesome hook. Super healthy fish. Get him right back in there. Whoop. Slide that right back down. And you're good to go. Now, we get a lot of questions, you know, just in on Nico rigging in general, and how to keep those weights in there. So there's a few different things people can do, and really it all depends on the material plastic you use. So you kind of got to experiment with it a little bit. Like Ryan's done a video on using a smaller sized O-ring, you know, putting it on the end and you're putting it on the spike of that nail weight and that's holding it on there. I prefer the super glue, especially with a power bait worm. I'll just run you through real quick and show you exactly how I rig it. You know, it's nice to sometimes just have an extra worm laying around. So I just get my half, half moon weight out of here. You know, I got a bunch of different sizes in here, fishing a little bit deeper. So I'll use a little bit bigger one. Come here. Close that back up. You know, this is the Magnum Shaky Snake. It's a pretty big worm for Nico Riggin, but it seems to work pretty well. I like to use the scissors instead of just biting it off. It seems to just give me a little bit cleaner, cleaner end. Snip that off nice and flat. Not that it doesn't happen, you don't get that flat edge out of the package, but um, I just think when you cut it, you just get a little bit better weld. So I add that super glue before I do anything, and I kind of spread it around the tip there. Get enough on there. Take that. Shove it right down the center. And you can see it kind of bubbles up around. I, I don't mind seeing that. I know that that's welded in there. Just so it's totally ready to go. Shove that in there. Slide an O-ring up on it. And now it's ready to go. And generally with O-ring placement too, on this worm in particular, I like to kind of have it in that bottom third of the worm. You know, some guys will stick it right in the middle, which I don't know, it, it's fine, but I, I tend to like, you know, on this worm, you can see kind of the, the middle fat part there. I'll just drop it right on the bottom side of that. And it seems to just give it a little bit better action when your O-ring's closer to the weight than it is to the middle of the worm. That one didn't even hit the bottom. He's swimming right at me. I was trying to feel bottom and I ended up just seeing my line swimming right at me. Might be a little bit better one. He's hiding under the boat. And kind of surprised me. But again, right on that transition line. So we've just spot locked right here. And I kind of feel like if you make a cast on the right hand side of the boat, that's, wow, he's digging. This could be a little better one. Come on, buddy, where you at? Well, there he is, yeah, not a bad one. Get a little jump out of him. Come here. Oh, come on. Chunky one. We might have to do a little hook reversal trick on him. It's unfortunately, sometimes that happens when they eat it that fast when it's on the fall. Get it pliers here. You know, so that's just kind of the nature of using a Nico rig. 
soft plastics at times. They just get it a little too well. So coming up, being real careful, not hit the gills, grab the base of it, rotate the eye of that hook down, and it pops right out of there. There's a little tension on the line, so it just came right out, but not a giant, but healthy fish. Get him back. And yeah, it's pretty, you know, it's a pretty standard deal. Fish like hard bottom, they like transition zones. And it's kind of windy out today, so you can see we're, we're just sitting right on that transition. And we came out here and we bounced some hard baits around, threw a crankbait on it. A little bit more aggressive stuff thinking that there was fish here and they'd be eating it, but they weren't biting that stuff. So dialing it back to a little bit more finesse tactics like Nico rig, getting a few bites.